Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create colourful light rays in Photoshop CC 2014. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make flashes of colour like this, sort of ribbons of colour in Photoshop CC 2014 if you have the right hardware installed because this is actually using the new Flames feature. And while I can run Adobe Photoshop CC 2014 on my PC, I don't have the hardware required to run the Flames filter, which is why I'm recording this on a Mac. So you'll want to make sure that those features are available to you and you will need Photoshop CC 2014 to do this. So I'm going to start by choosing File and then New. and I'm going to create a document which is really quite wide in comparison to its height. So I'm just going to make it 1500 by 800 pixels in size. I'm going to make a white background and just click OK. Now the Flames feature requires you to create a path so you're going to need to click here on the pen tool but I promise you it's not going to involve a lot of operation with the pen tool. What I'm going to do is start by clicking and dragging on the very edge of the document. So I'm click and drag and I'm going to head out in the direction I want to go in because I want to make this a sort of sweeping S sort of shape curve. So I've already started going out in this direction so I've now let go of the mouse button and now I'm going to click and drag in a downwards direction and that's creating this sort of curve. And now I'm going to head over here and I'm going to click and drag here to make this curve and then click and drag down here just to finish off. So what you want is this sort of simple curve, mountain-like curve, anything that's sort of curvy will be just fine. And you're doing that by clicking and dragging and in each case you want to drag in the direction you're heading in. Now I'm going to create a new layer for this. I'm just going to click here on the new layer icon because I want my flames to be separated from my background and that's pretty critical. And now I'll choose filter and then render and this is what we're looking for, the flame filter. If it's not available then you can't run it. So let's just click flame. And this opens a new dialog and there are lots and lots of options here and really what you're looking for in here is just something interesting. So once you get just something interesting you can pack your bags and go home. So let's just alter width and you'll see that any alterations of these values really really creates a different effect. So you don't have to move very far to get some interesting effects. And I'm just starting with one flame along the path, but you could try one of the other options here. There are plenty of options. I'm just finding that one flame along the path is pretty much what I'm looking for for this effect. Now, I think that's kind of interesting. So I might sort of settle for something like this. I can change the complexity. And again, just a simple adjustment of one or two will change the entire look of this flame. So I think I'm just going to go back to something that I like and change the turbulence. Jag opacity. Now with opacity you want to be really careful because if you up the opacity you're just going to get a big blob of colour and what we're looking for is some subtlety here because that's what we're going to use to get a little bit of more detail in the flames later on. So I'm just going to change the opacity. This randomized shapes is what's making the flames change every time I draw them. You can change the flame bottom alignment. You don't have to randomize shapes. So if you turn off randomized shapes, then your flames are going to be a little bit more consistent in just how they look. So I suggest that you work around in this dialogue and just familiarize yourself with it and just plan to experiment until you get some interesting flames. Now I think I'm going to go back to randomize just so that I can get something a little bit interesting. Well let's call that good so I'm just going to click OK. But basically what you want to do is not leave the flames dialog until you have something of interest because this is our flame. So I'm going to go to paths now and I'm just going to trash this work path because I don't want it in the way I don't need it anymore and it's just going to mess things around. So basically this is what I've got. These are the flames that have come out of the flame filter and these are bitmaps. So they're just the pixels. There's no vector object here. We can't alter it now that we've created it. That's what we've got. The first thing I'm going to do is warp this a little bit. So I'm going to click on the move tool and I've got show transform control selected here. I'm going to choose edit and then transform and then warp. 
what I want to do is to warp this so I'm going to start just dragging down because I want to create my ribbon shape because I'm going to be duplicating this layer and working with it I really need to settle exactly how it's going to look before I go any further now you can spend some time trying to get an interesting ribbon shape here you can pull on any of these lines so you can pull on the line itself or at the intersection of the lines and down here you can just pull on these handles if you like as well so what you're looking for is just an interesting sort of flame shape and you don't want to leave this dialogue until you've got the look of your flames just don't worry too much about the color at this stage but you do want that flame shape so I'm just going to call that good and this is what my flames are going to look like next thing I'm going to do is to fill this with a gradient so I've actually already created my gradient and it's a sort of red purple and blue gradient but you can use any of the built-in gradients or you can just make your own gradient now it's important that when we fill it with this gradient that we actually lock these pixels because we only want to fill the pixels that are actually filled with something already we don't want to fill the rest of the layer so I've got the layer selected, I've got this lock on for this layer, I've got my gradient selected and it's a linear gradient so I'm just going to drag across the image and that just applies the gradient to this shape. Now I'm just going to undo that because I've just seen something that's not right here. I've got my gradient set to multiply, I want it set to normal so I want to put these pixels or well, these colors down in their original color so that's what I want so I can have another go at adding the gradient if it's not quite the way I want it to look and when I'm happy with it let's call that good now I'm going to duplicate this layer first of all I'm going to unlock the pixels so I'm just going to click that icon again to unlock the transparent pixels and make a duplicate of this layer I'm going to turn the bottom one off I just want to focus on this top one and what I want to do is to extract the lines from it and that's a two-step process First of all I'm going to sharpen this layer and then I'm going to grab the lines from it and it's really important that this lock transparent pixels is not selected when you go to sharpen it. So I'm going to choose filter and then sharpen. I'm just going to use unsharp mask. Here we've got the preview available so I'm going to crank up my amount here and I'm going to decrease the radius and the threshold and what you'll see here is that we've sharpened these edges a little bit I might just crank it up a little bit more and really what I want to try and do is to extract some of these interesting lines out of this particular layer so it doesn't matter that we've cranked the amount up quite high you can experiment with increased radius all sorts of things to try and get some interesting line work out of the underlying flame effect so I'm just going to click OK now I'm going to extract the lines from this so I'm going to do that by choosing filter and then stylize find edges now this is just a filter that finds the edges there are no settings for this filter but that's just given us the edge detail and now I'm going to turn my underlying layer back on again because I want to see what happens when I start blending these two layers together so I'm going to just click on the first of these blend modes on the PC I could now be pressing a down arrow key on the Mac I'm going to press shift plus I'm just going to run through these actually I need to make sure that I am not using a tool like the gradient tool when I do this otherwise it doesn't work on the Mac let's just try that again okay so now we're running down these blend modes to see if we can find an interesting way of interacting the lines that we've got with the underlying element the colored flames so I'm just looking for something of interest as I run through here and I've found that I've done this a few times and really each time I'm choosing something different in terms of how I want these to blend together there's sort of nothing that sits or sticks out as being the sort of effect that I want more than anything else so I'm kind of liking the color effect here I'm going to just grab this but what I am going to do is to decrease the opacity of it because I just want a little bit of colored lines through here but not perhaps at the intensity that I would have got had I used the full opacity for that layer 
And you can do other things with this now that you've created this. You can use, for example, curves adjustment. So let's just go and add a curves adjustment to this image. And this will allow you to intensify some of the color effects. You can lighten things, add a bit more contrast through the mid-tones in the image by just applying a standard S curve. You can darken the lighter areas. So you have a bit of ability to actually tweak the effect that you get. Now I've created a similar effect in Illustrator using lines and that's just not available in Photoshop. So I'm really finding this flames filter is giving me an interesting start for creating some sort of colored ribbon effects that are not dissimilar from what we're able to achieve in Illustrator but this of course is using tools that are available to us in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.